This is John Petrucci from Dream Theater, and you're watching Loudwire. Um, I grew up on Long Island in New York, and there were many, many garage bands in my neighborhood. And I still remember watching these guys play and they were playing Paranoid by Black Sabbath and I just wanted to be able to play it on guitar. Um, I tried to figure it out and uh, didn't realize that Black Sabbath was tuned down so that wasn't helpful and there was also this one little tricky technique that I finally saw somebody play right in front of me and made me uh, make it sound like the way Tony Iommi was playing it, this little sort of hammer-on thing. So it was uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid. <laughs> So the first riff I ever learned um, was actually from Hey Hey My My, uh, Neil Young, and uh, I'd gone over to Kevin Moore's house. Kevin Moore was the original keyboard player in Dream Theater. We were best friends growing up on Long Island. He lived right around the corner. He was uh, having a jam session, and they needed somebody to play the, uh, the guitar line, and I don't remember who taught it to me. I learned it and was struggling, couldn't play, but it was the first thing I learned was the Neil Young riff. When I was growing up, uh, I started playing guitar when I was about 12 years old, and I was self-taught. I didn't have a guitar teacher. Um, the neighborhood was my guitar teacher. I would go to any jam session I could, jam the blues, um, jam on Santana songs, jam on metal, rock, whatever I could, could. and uh, by the time I um, was ready to graduate high school I decided to go to Berkeley uh, College of Music in Boston and so then I took a couple of lessons to try to prepare myself for the sight reading and stuff like that but other than that yeah I was uh, self-taught and I think that was really helpful in developing my ear because I learned uh, all the riffs and solos and things um, by uh, listening to records and, and trying to figure it out for myself so it was a great learning experience. Early on when I was uh, first getting into um, lead playing, I struggled a lot with uh, bending and vibrato. I, I think mainly because I didn't really know what it was and I would try to play these solos and it just didn't really sound like it. And it wasn't until I discovered uh, bending and vibrato and, and the way that guitar players like Angus Young and Jimmy Page were, uh, were doing this that my playing started to sound better. Um, one of the things about that is when you're uh, first learning to play guitar and bend, you don't realize that, you know, in order to kind of get some leverage, you have to wrap your thumb around and use your other supporting fingers behind the bending finger. So if you're bending with your, your third finger, you don't just kind of bend with it by itself like this. That's, I've seen guys do that, that's really difficult. You kind of, you know, grab the guitar, you use the leverage point, and use the other fingers behind it like this. Very, very important. And uh, also vibrato, you know, I, I didn't realize how big of a signature um, vibrato was uh, for guitar players. Uh, from Van Halen to Randy Rhodes to uh, Steve Morris to Steve Ray Vaughan, everybody has a very distinctive, distinct uh, vibrato style and I learned how to do it by slowing down records. I mean I remember listening to an Iron Maiden record and hearing this really slow but when you played at normal speed and so I made the uh, you know realization that vibrato was just a series of bends up, up and down and that was a big moment for me and it made all of my soloing become, become uh, more believable and it also helped me develop my own sound as a guitar player. When I was learning guitar, uh, my friends and I, including John Myung, the bass player in Dream Theater, uh, we uh, really loved Iron Maiden and Rush. So we like knew every Iron Maiden and Rush song. Um, when uh, Number of the Beast was a big one, I mean we literally learned all those songs. So that was one of the risks we loved playing together was from uh, Number of the Beasts.
And uh, with Rush, I mean, there's so many amazing Rush albums, but actually the very first one has a lot of the more kind of rock, like Zeppelin-ish songs. And uh, we used to jam on that stuff all the time. My friends and I, uh, Working Man was a favorite one because it had this like extended guitar solo section and I just loved it. But uh, yeah, the, the main opening riff in Working Man uh, was one of my favorites. <laughs> So me and Kevin Moore, who I mentioned before, the first keyboard player in Dream Theater, we were best friends growing up. Uh, we did everything together. And uh, one of the bands um, that we really loved, probably because he was a keyboard player, was The Doors. And uh, we used to jam on Doors songs all the time. And I tried to learn those solos. And those Robbie Krieger solos uh, were difficult for me because it, it was hard to kind of figure out what was going on. Um, the solo in Roadhouse Blues, I never quite actually learned it exactly, but it kind of sort of was doing these rock and roll Chuck Berry-ish kind of licks. And that was actually help, helpful for me to learn back then um, because it's such, uh, there's such staple ingredients to uh, guitar soloing. And I don't know exactly, but something like this. <laughs> My favorite Dream Theater riffs are usually the ones um, that elicit a great crowd response. And, you know, I, I, I just love kind of writing and playing riffs like that, especially live. The latest album, Distance Over Time, there's a song um, called Barstool Warrior. And I just knew, like, when we wrote it, that I, I, I knew it was going to kind of elicit that reaction. And sure enough, it has. And I love playing it live. All right, so another favorite uh, Dream Theater riff of mine uh, is from the Awake album, and uh, it is the first song that I wrote when getting my first seven string guitar. It's the mirror, it's really simple, it's literally one chord and a certain rhythm that keeps repeating, but um, whenever we play the song live, it just gets the audience so pumped. And uh, I love the opening, which is a little bit of this kind of backwards pick scrape. It goes like this. And another favorite uh, riff of mine is from the Systematic Chaos record, where it was very riff-centric. And I was trying to come up with what would be sort of an original but uh, quirky and cool heavy riff, again, written on the seven string, and it's the one for the dark eternal night. And uh, whenever I play that riff and we go into it again, the audience just really responds great. <laughs> One of the first riffs I wrote way back when with John My Young uh, back on Long Island when we were growing up and before we went to Berklee College of Music and met Mike Portnoy and the uh, beginnings of Dream Theater, uh, you know, started um, was a song called The School Song. I don't really remember why it was called The School Song, but we had a demo called The Majesty Demo because Dream Theater used to be called Majesty. A um, little bit of trivia about that, and my Ernie Ball Music Man signature guitars are called Majesty Guitars, and this is the Dream Theater logo is actually uh, an M that's left over from the old Majesty days. So the school song <laughs> was one of the first riffs that I wrote. <laughs> So my brand new solo album is called Terminal Velocity. It's coming out in a couple of days. And uh, I have a, a few riffs on that record um, that I'm really proud of. It's definitely chock full of riffs, um, very much like Suspended Animation that came out back in 2005. So this is my first solo album in 15 years. And one of the songs um, I wrote to be kind of the stomp 
with a real, I don't know, queen or rock and roll, uh, Joe Satriani type of feel to it, audience participation, and it just has a single guitar throughout the whole song, and it's called Snake in My Boot. It's really just like a rock kind of riff, but it's a lot of fun to play. <laughs> There's another riff from Terminal Velocity that uh, was fun to play, and I look forward to playing it live because uh, I think it just it's going to have a lot of energy. It's from the closing track on the record. It's called Temple of Circadia, and it's also the only seven-string song on the album. The riff goes like this. <laughs> 